Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. What happened out there? I mean, that's it's not good ball. Yeah, I got scared by something. I can't explain it. I think it's a product of us not playing to, to our standard. And sometimes things like that happen. You know, this game's about winning, and uh, we came up short. Obviously, very disappointing offensively. So, yeah, there's frustration in this game. It's a frustrating game. It has definitely been a couple of frustrating weeks for the Green Bay Packers. They lost on the road to, at the time, two undefeated teams. Only one of those two remains undefeated, and that is the Carolina Panthers. But Mike McCarthy overall, they're back here at home where they've won 12 straight. As you said in the open, Troy, they're not panicking in this building. And they're taking on a Lions team that if you think it's been frustrating for the Green Bay Packers, Walk a mile in their shoes. One and seven with changes all over the place. Randy with us here today as Martin kicks it away and Hyde will bring it out. Can't make the 20. And brought down on the play after a 23 yard return by Isaiah Johnson just added to the active roster. Let's go down to Aaron Andrews. And Joe, you mentioned Eddie Lacy and active today with that groin injury. He suffered late in the game against Carolina. We saw him in practice yesterday really unable to do anything and that's when Mike McCarthy said that injury was a very big concern. Spoke with offensive coordinator Edgar Bennett who told me James Starks will have more in his plate. All hands on deck for the running game. He also mentioned a new wrinkle or two lining up in the backfield, Joe. Aaron, thanks. Pass is caught. Flag flies as Randall Cobb makes the grab. Brought down immediately by Josh Wilson. It's an 11-yard completion. And we'll see if it stands. Holding. Defense. Number 30. That penalty is the climb. Result of the play is a first down. So it's against Wilson who had the coverage on Cobb. A follow up on what Aaron Andrews said about Eddie Lacy. You watch him and the struggles that he's been through here over the last month of the season. And you had to believe that he just was not healthy. I know the groin last week, he's had the ankle injury, but just has not been the explosive back that we had seen through his first two seasons. Rodgers, quick setup and throw, and he's got Devontae Adams on the sideline, forced out by Lawson after a gain of seven. The numbers overall are ridiculous. For somebody that I think you and I agree is the best in the business, but at home over the last 20 games, that's ridiculous. 52 and two touchdown to interception. Unreal. And he started three for three. Adams again, first down Green Bay, and we'll look at the offense and highlight some faces for the Packers as they come in with a 25th ranked offense in the NFL. That's hard to believe. Well, they're making a statement here on this first drive. They've come out, they've thrown the ball on every snap. Aaron Rodgers is finding his groove. Yeah. Kill, 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 kill. kill. We got 5-5. Five, five. Green 18. Adams again. Four for four is Rodgers. And he's brought down by Lawson. A gain of four. We look at the defense. It's hard to remember that this was the second ranked defense in the NFL a year ago. They are just getting shredded with their run defense and through the air, especially lately. Second and six. Toss to starts. Aaron Rodgers will categorize James Starks as a slasher as a runner that makes distinctive cuts. And that's really what they weren't getting out of Eddie Lacy, who had five carries for 10 yards last week and a fumble at Carolina. Well, he's a downhill back. He's been productive, you know, really throughout his time here in Green Bay, whenever he's gotten his opportunities. He was named the starter this week before they were even certain that Eddie Lacy was not going to be able to play. On third down, it starts, and he's got a first down in midfield. This offensive line, which came into the season regarded as one of the best in the NFL, 
They have been frustrated the last couple of weeks as well. Eight sacks over the last two games after allowing 11 in the first six. So they have some answers to provide here today against Detroit. 319! Get out! Go on! 158! Rodgers passes low and incomplete. Had Adams, but couldn't get it to him. Boy, he had Devontae Adams wide open. That was just a poor throw by Aaron Rodgers. He knows he, he missed one there. And you take a look at Matthew Stafford, a guy who he can relate to some of the pressures and some of the hits that Aaron Rodgers has taken over the last two weeks. He's been beat up pretty good himself. Impressive opening drive so far for the Packers. Knocked down by Quinn, a gain of 17. Uh, this is one of the things that James Starks does so well. We saw last week in the second half against Carolina, a couple screen passes that he caught. Big gains here on second and long. They run the screen play again, and another nice pickup for James Starks. Adams slipped as he made a move. Troy, you and I were down on this field before the game started. And I have never seen the turf in better condition here at Lambeau Field. It's almost slow because it's so thick and lush right now. It's pretty nice, uh, you know, here in the north this time of year. They haven't had a game here in four weeks. It's a, a mixture of natural grass along with a synthetic grass. And you're right. You don't see fields in this kind of condition no matter where you are in this league. Starks. It'll bring up third down as he tried the left side. Packers have been so good in the opening quarter. 73 first quarter points. Most in the NFL. The margin is the best in the NFL. And this will be play number 11. Rip, rip, rip. Rip, rip, rip. Rip, Rodgers toward the end zone and out of the reach of Devontae Adams. It's fourth down. And the Packers right now look like they'll take the points as Crosby comes on. Well, Devontae Adams, he was targeted a lot here on this opening possession, and most of those were against Nevin Lawson, and that's the guy who Aaron Rodgers talked about. Rasheen Mathis, the 13-year corner, was put on IR yesterday, and Rodgers said if Mathis can't go, we're going after whoever replaces him. That is Lawson, and he was true to his word. They attacked him throughout this possession. Crosby is good as he banks it in. He hits the left upright. And the Packers lead by three. This game is sponsored by Southwest. Transparency. No fears, nothing to hide. Well, the number now is 76 first quarter points put up by the Green Bay Packers. I know what came out of my mouth and what was on the screen were differing figures. 73 before that drive, 76 now to lead the NFL. And the three points lead the Lions, and now out of the end zone, it's Abdullah. The rookie, who's got great speed and wants to be more a part of the offense, headed forward, 30-yard return. Good start, not what Aaron Rodgers wanted in the end. Three points. And a Packer lead as Crosby banked it home. This game is sponsored by Bud Light. Make the right call. Drink responsibly. Matthew Stafford in the offense for the Lions set up at the 24. And they run it with Joy Bell who's dropped in the backfield and a good play is made by Julius Peppers. 
A loss of two. Julius Peppers, he gets inside the tackle, and he's able to get penetration then into the backfield, and Joyke Bell has no opportunity. Julius Peppers just right on top of him. A great way to start this game defensively. Well, the run game for the Lions is last in the NFL. They're averaging less than 70 rush yards a game. That's the second lowest figure in the Lions' long history. Going back to 1946. The only time they've been less than that. Not much here with Bell. And Bell gets just a yard. And Matthew Stafford is tired of this number. 0 for his last 19 on the road against winning teams. There are the numbers. He is 0 and 4 on the road here at Lambeau against the Pack. Well, what's hurt this offense throughout the season is they've not been very good on early downs. They've had a lot of third and longs. They don't stay on the field, unable to run the football. And this is where Matthew Stafford has taken a lot of hits. They have not handled the pressure inside. And that's exactly what the Packers are showing right now. Pass is incomplete right off the face mask of Ebron. And Burnett was right there on his back anyway, and that drive lost a yard. Three and out. Oh, it's a Packers defense that can, comes into this game having given up yards on the ground. And Detroit, even though they've been terrible running the football this year, is they come out early and think that maybe they can get something going. Green Bay snuffs it out on the first two plays. Third and long and force a three and out. Martin punts it. And uh, immediately hit is Micah Hyde. And a good play downfield by George Wynn. But the Packers get it right back. Good start for Green Bay here up three. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. By Pizza Hut's Triple Treat Box. Make any night a holiday. And by Visa Checkout, the easier way to pay online. Sign up now. Drive him back, young man. How good is that? Football in the yard in the shadow of Lambeau Field. And what's just stunning to me is how 80-plus thousand people can be dead quiet when the Green Bay Packers have the ball, as we heard in that first possession. Well, there's smart fans here. There's no doubt about that. And you couldn't ask for a better day than we have here now. No wind whatsoever. Rodgers floats it over the head of Adams. You see Aaron Rodgers, he's frustrated with the throw on that one, too. You know, going back to last week, just, just missed some throws that you just don't typically see from him. He had Devontae Adams on that first possession up the sidelines against Lawson and failed to complete that one and, and missed another opportunity on that last play. 319! 319! Here starts on second and ten. Not much. He takes it to the 41. They're down and eight. Coming up, let's go to Mike Hill with a game break. Panthers trying to stay unbeaten off to a good start against Tennessee. Jonathan Stewart having a good season. 16 yards gets him six. Seven nothing Panthers in the first. Joe Troy back to you. Mike, thanks. They're down and eight here for Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers to the sideline incomplete. Barking out the protection was Aaron Rodgers. A blitz came from the Lions. Abraderis is the intended target, and it's fourth down. Yeah, you know, Aaron Rodgers talked about Abraderis and, and his contributions here today. We spoke about the fact that they wanted to get back to three wide receiver sets, that's predominantly all they've done here on the first two possessions, but they also wanted to incorporate some of their four wide receiver sets with Aberderis. He had his opportunity on that third down play. Line drive punt. Gathered in by Tate, and he's wrestled out of bounds across the 25 by Jeff Janis. Lions have it second time in the game. First quarter, 3-0. Green Bay on top. 
Been a struggle to say the least offensively for Jim Caldwell's Lions. First down at the 26. The rookie Abdullah in the backfield, and there's nowhere for him to go, making the most out of it. And this offensive line hasn't stopped anybody. Well, how long has it been? The last time the Lions won in the state of Wisconsin, 1991, here are all the quarterbacks the Lions have had since their last win in this state. We say it that way for a reason. Get into that in a moment. 13 of them. Sean Hill and now Matthew Stafford. After Pete, Craig Mitchell, Mikowski, Farrat, Batch, Harrington, Kitna, Garcia, Orlovsky, and Culpepper. Well, the Lions ought to remember all those names when they start thinking about whether or not Matthew Stafford should stick around. Second and eight. This is broken up, and that is well played by Matthews. He got his hand in front of Pettigrew. Third down and eight. Now, a lot of discussion about whether or not Matthew Stafford's going to return as the quarterback of this team, and I find it all pretty confusing myself. I've been a big fan of Matthew Stafford since he was at Georgia University and when he came here to Detroit. This is where he wanted to be, but when you can't run the football and you can't protect the quarterback, I don't care who you are, you're going to have some tough afternoons, and he certainly has this year. Just got it away, third down and eight. Pass is batted down. Matthews was in the vicinity. It's fourth down and eight, and it's been three and out twice. Let's see if Matthews got it. No surprise. Yeah, you, you see, look. Mike Daniels, he gets the pressure right over the rookie, Lakin Tomlinson, and right back into Matthew Stafford's face to get the ball batted down, but there's just constant bodies in Stafford's face all season long when he's tried to throw the ball. Hyde can't do anything with it, and a good punt from Martin as it's tapped down near the 16, 17-yard line. Packers have the football third time up three. Aerial coverage provided by Nationwide. And in case you're at home wondering, the Lions won the coin toss to start the day. They deferred. That's why the Packers started with it. Lions will get the ball to start the second half right now. 3-0 Green Bay on top. The late handoff to Starks. When we asked Aaron Rodgers about the switch to Starks, and again, this was knowing that Lacey was iffy and he's not active for this game, he just simply said production. The production of Starks has been better, and they're riding James Starks with Alonzo Harris, a rookie, backing him up here today. There's Adams. First down at the 40. And Adams has been busy. 18 yards. This is an outstanding job by him off the line of scrimmage. You see the move that he's able to put on Lawson and then strong hands to be able to make that catch. This is an excellent job. And Devontae Adams was, he's probably as healthy as he's been since week one. It's his third game back since he had the ankle injury. Felt pretty good last week. Very productive afternoon against Carolina. But he's been targeted a lot here in this first quarter. Yeah, how about eight times already Adams has been targeted. Good protection starts. Vines forces him out. Gain of two. A lot of protection there for Aaron Rodgers. And you know, this offensive line has really been challenged here over the last couple of weeks. Two good defensive teams, defensive fronts. Aaron Rodgers has been hit a lot, certainly a lot more than what he's accustomed to. But some of those sacks that were given up really had more to do with coverage than the way this offensive line played. See the numbers since week four, not good. Dang, dang it, dang it. 19. Here's Starks on second and eight. And a good play is made. That was not a, a loss of one, third and long coming up. Yeah, they bring in Halati. Nope, or Haloti Nada in the offseason. They lose in Dominican Sue. Really, they lost the interior of that defense, and that's one of the big reasons why they have struggled the way that they have, especially 
in the run game. He's been a good addition, but he he's limited in the number of snaps that he can take through the game. He's taken about 60 snap or 60 percent of the snaps defensively. But the loss of Sue certainly has impacted this defense. No tight ends, four wide receivers in the back. Ready, ready, jump. Rodgers finds Cobb and Cobb drops it. Good throw by Aaron Rodgers and Randall Cobb just could not pull it in. And he had a mile to run after the catch. Well, the Lions, they bring the pressure. This is what the Packers have struggled with the last couple of weeks. Good route by Randall Cobb, just not able to haul it in. T.J. Lang does an outstanding job of helping out his quarterback and keeping him from taking a big hit at the end of that play. Well, that might have been a touchdown. There was nobody out there for Detroit. Tate from inside the 10, knocked down as he takes it to the 15. And while the offense for Detroit comes back onto the field, it's been a turbulent couple of weeks. For the Detroit Lions, they fired their offensive coordinator. They fired their offensive line coaches. They've made changes in the front office with their general manager, with their team president. Uh, and yet through it all, here they are in Green Bay trying to get a win. There's a lot on their plate right now. Yeah, there is a lot on their plate. You have to remind yourself this was a team that was 11-5 and five last year and a, and a playoff team. But a lot of moves made over the last couple of weeks and a lot of questions as to whether or not Jim Caldwell is going to be next. Here's Joyke Bell. Joyke picks up six. Aaron Andrews has more on the Lions situation. I spoke to Golden Tate about what the mood is like with the Lions, and he said, when you lose, people get fired. And if we continue to lose, the players are next. And he said, you know what? I want to keep my job. And that's why I am reminding people, we did win last year. We are a good team. We practice well. We just have to find a way to put it all together and have some swagger. Starts up front with this offensive line. Yeah, they can start by picking up a first down. Stafford flushed out. Finds a first down as he gets Lance Moore. And a nice adjustment by Matthew Stafford. That was a long throw. Well, initially he was going to go to Calvin Johnson. Shields plays that perfectly on the outside. He's able to buy some time, navigate the pocket, come right back to the opposite sideline for the first down to Lance Moore. Demarius Randall in coverage. He's the rookie, first round pick out of Arizona State. He's the starting corner now. They love him. Hand off to Abdullah. Nothing. With that, here's Kurt with a game break. All right, looks like the Eagles may have their act together. They've won three of four, and after Ryan Matthews' one-yard score, are up 16-3 on the Dolphins, and there's still just under five minutes left in the first quarter. Joe, Troy, and Aaron. Kurt, thanks. The Eagles trying to get over the 500 mark. The Giants have their hands full later today for the home game against New England. Well, the Eagles have a stretch of games that most people, including myself, believe they can get on a run. Second and ten. Stafford. Nowhere to go with it. You know, through it all, with all the frustration that Matthew Stafford has felt after being an 11-win team a year ago, it finally all came together. He's a guy that just does not complain. It's, it's impressive. It is impressive. I mean, he's had every right to when you... Talk about some of the instability of the organization, the way that he has gotten hit. I mean, I'm telling you, Joe, I've not seen a quarterback in the last two weeks get hit the way he has. I mean, some punishing blows. Yeah, he gets up and keeps on playing. Never complains. He's as tough as they come. I think they'd be crazy if they let him go. Blitz coming. Matthews gets free. Stafford had joint bell but threw it out of his reach. Bell was in protection, then leaked out. Stafford had him and missed him. Well, he sure did. I mean, he's trying to deliver the football on target under duress. But had he have been able to get the ball to Joyke Bell, there was a lot of space for him to run. That was schoolyard ball at its finest. Martin with his third punt. 
Calvin Johnson has not been targeted so far and Stafford has started one for six. Good start for this Packer defense. Good punt. Hyde from the 15. Out of bounds to the 21. George Wynn downfield again. 54-yard punt by Martin. It's a new tradition in college basketball. You're not going to want to miss it. The Gavit tip-off game. It's the Big East against the Big Ten. For four days of incredible action beginning Tuesday with Nebraska-Villanova at 8.30 Eastern only on FS1. It's Fida, our statistician, reminding me that Gene Sterator will be refereeing that game. So for all the Sterator fans out there, it's the Gavit tip-off games Tuesday, Nebraska-Villanova at 8.30 Eastern. Didn't Fida get his autograph one game? It's it's borderline an obsession. Hey, five, 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 five. From the 21. Three, nine, two. Three, nine, two. Rogers, good protection again. And he's got Perillo, the tight end. And Perillo may work his way into the plan a little more. That for Justin, catch number three on the year. Whitehead brings him down a gain of six. Well, an excellent job once again by this offensive line, giving Aaron Rodgers plenty of time to, to look over the field before checking it down to Perillo. Right now they motion, they got Randall Cobb back in the backfield. Good play up front defensively. And that's the big body of Gabe Wright. The rookie made the play, the fourth round pick out of Auburn, a loss of three, and he was right on the back. But well, Randall Cobb. Yeah, they're asking, excuse me, Corey Lindsay, they're asking him to try to make that block, but not before he was able to get into the backfield. Randall Cobb, just no opportunity. Lions traded up to get right. Good play there. Third down and seven. Rodgers is tripped up and down he goes. And the play is made by Caron Reed, a loss of two. And this defense for the Lions is playing better after that first possession. That's an outstanding job of Reed fighting off the block and being able to make a tackle in the open field against Aaron Rodgers. They've given up some yardage to quarterbacks once they've scrambled. Rodgers picks up this first down if he doesn't make that play. We are through one quarter of play. 3-0 Green Bay back after this from your local Fox station. Talking about how thick that grass is, it is lush here at Lambeau, and you can see they're already changing shoes. The length of the cleats underneath those shoes is they have to adjust on the visiting sideline. Now fourth and eight, Mass Day with a punt, his third. Line drive spiral, drives Tate back inside the 25. Room to run, Golden Tate to the 45. Knocked down by Mastay, the punter. And Tate is not able to pop back up right away. 22-yard return. That would be his long for the year. It is as he grabs at that right ankle. New offensive coordinator for Detroit is Jim Bob Cooter. And if you talk to Jim Caldwell, the head coach, he really thinks he's going to be a fantastic coordinator in this league. Well, he sure does. In fact, he was a backup quarterback at the University of Tennessee when Matthew Stafford was at Georgia. Handoff is to Bell running left. And this defense for Green Bay has really started fast. A gain of three. Here's a look back at Jim Bob Cooter walk-on quarterback at the University of Tennessee. <laughs> Still laugh when I see that photo. It looks like a 1950 it shot does. that they colorized. I mean, the guy's not that old. But no, they, I tell you, Matthew Stafford, I know, is excited about him calling the plays. They were more of a two-back offense under Joe Lombardi, and for whatever reason, it just didn't really connect with him and Matthew Stafford. And they've gone more to the one-back sets 
that Matthew Stafford likes to run here in the last two weeks. Good news for Detroit. Tate was out there. Here's Bell. Joy Bell runs into Julius Peppers, a gain of five, third down and shorts coming up. Well, they finally get a little something going there on, in the run game to make this a manageable third down. Detroit has yet to convert one of these, but they've been staring at third and long on their previous three opportunities. They only have one first down so far. They've had third and 11, third and eight, third and 10. This is third and two. Looking for Calvin Johnson, it's not there. And Dom Capers has to be thrilled with the way his defensive group has come out of the gate here today. Yeah, they're trying to give Matthew Stafford some time, so they move the pocket, avoid any kind of pressure that Dom Capers may dial up, but Green Bay defensively, you know, really plays it beautifully. Trying to get the ball into Calvin Johnson, they're underneath the throw, and just no place for Matthew Stafford to throw it. That's an excellent job by this Packers defense. See how well Martin does trying to get this down inside the 20 and staring straight into the sun. Hyde lets it go over his head and it's tapped down inside the 10 at the 9. 39-yard punt. Been a frustrating start. Been a frustrating year for the Lions on offense as they trail by three. This game on Fox is sponsored by the Ford F-150. Every other truck is history. Bio Tesla. Ask your doctor today. And by Microsoft Surface, the official tablet of the NFL. As we welcome you back to Lambeau Field, starting at their own seven as they move the ball back during the timeout. The Green Bay Packers, first down, up three. Here's Starks. Boy, that is a linebacker filling a hole. That's Tullock. No gain, and that's a big hit by Steven Tullock. Big time, and Aaron Rupowski, he's got an opportunity. He's got to decide who he's going to block. He turns Tullock loose, and he fills the hole, and it's just a one-on-one -on -one drill with, with him and James Starks, and he wins that one. Second and 10. And 18. Pass is a one-handed grab by Adams, who's showing what he can do. And that's a first down as it's good for 11. That's a big-time catch. I mean, he's had some nice releases off the line of scrimmage on these slant routes that we've seen him run now here in this first half. A ball that's out in front of him, and, and he's able to haul it in. And Nevin Lawson is getting a lot of balls thrown in his direction with Devontae Adams. That's just a great job of concentration and being able to make a play on the ball. He's already been thrown to nine times. Devontae is now playing in his third game back after dealing with an ankle injury. Looks healthy now. Rodgers is swallowed up as the protection breaks down. To hear Whitehead was in there for Detroit, a loss of seven. Well, it just all collapses on Aaron Rodgers as he's trying to step up in the pocket. You see all the bodies that are circling him, and the routes were intermediate in depth, and so he just couldn't turn the ball loose as quickly as he had wanted to with the pressure that he was under. That's a second sack for Detroit, a loss of seven. And that was a big hit on Rodgers. Hand off to Starks. They're going to mark him down at the 23rd down coming up. Let's go to Kurt Menefee with a game break. Well, the Packers saw a little of this last week. Cam Newton and the Panthers off to a hot start. Newton 10 for 10, 115 yards, and that touchdown to Ed Dixon, and they lead 14-7 in Tennessee. So, Troy Nerick. Troy, you a believer in the Carolina Panthers? I am. I think they're built well for the kind of play that they want. You know, in terms of running the football, play great defense, and Cam Newton he just makes plays when the opportunities present themselves. As we've seen, they're, they're rolling right now. 
Rodgers out to his right looking for a block. He gets it from Starks. And he's got a first down. That was beautiful. Rodgers said block him. And James Starks took care of it. He does an outstanding job of finishing the play by picking up the first down. You see the coverage that Detroit is able to have against these receivers. Pretty good job down the field, not really giving him anywhere to go with the ball. And Rodgers, you know, when you're in that man coverage, you got to account for the quarterback. Starks is able to make the key block that allows him to pick up that first down. You know, Joe, what we've seen the last two weeks from Denver and then Carolina is man coverage in Detroit. They're using a lot of that here this afternoon themselves. Good block by Starks on Abdul Kadus. Lawson is down. They look at him. We'll take a break. As we went to break, Nevin Lawson popped up, walked off under his own power. As we've said, Rasheen Mathis was put on IR. 35-year-old, 13-year pro corner. When they lost him, they lost some size out on the edge. 6'1", 195 is Mathis. They miss him on a day like this. Concussion issues for Mathis. On first down, Rodgers with a pass complete to Cobb, but nothing. And that's Abdul Kadus, who was the man blocked by Starks on that first down run by Rodgers moments ago. And Rodgers a little gimpy walking around back there. You know, like I said, he's taken a lot of hits over the last couple of weeks. That was a we take a look at maybe he landed funny hard to tell but he's grabbing for it. there's no question on the inside of his foot but that was a big first down for the Packers this is an offense after that first possession that they settled for the field goal they they haven't been able to do much offensively Cobb starts in the backfield and out of the backfield it's Cobb Bring up third and short as Randall Cobb gets six. Tulloch on the stop. Well, he draws a lot of attention when he's in the backfield. The great thing about putting him back there is you can't get the jams on him then. He makes it very difficult to try to cover him, but the Lions, they draw two people to him and make the tackle as soon as he makes the catch. Third and two. This one is floated for Abradaris. And his first catch, they love him. He played at Wisconsin. And Aaron Rodgers thinks he's got a chance to be a big time contributor. Yeah, he likes him a lot. It's a, it's a nice route. It's similar to the touchdown that they threw last week to Randall Cobb. In a hurry, a snap from Green Bay. A lot of room for Rodgers out there if he wants it. And he throws it away. Ziggy Ansa ends up on Aaron Rodgers' back, second and ten. I'm a little surprised. Rodgers, he gets out in the open field. There's nobody out in front of him. And you know, he pulls up as though he's got a really open receiver. He didn't. He takes a hit at the end of that play. But you know, he had a good 15, 20 yards out in front of him that he could have taken had he have just ran with the football. Now Alonzo Harris, the rookie back out of Louisiana Lafayette, college free agent, checks in. Here's that catch by Abraderis. Yeah, he runs the wheel route. He's up the sideline, and he's got a little size to him, and Rodgers throws it up. He makes a nice play on the ball. Second and ten. Trying to set up a screen. It is flipped and incomplete for Alonzo Harris. Third and ten. Tell you, it looked pretty good for this Packers offense on that opening possession. They came out throwing the ball. They were attacking Lawson with Devontae Adams, completing passes, and, and it's just been a bit of a struggle. You know, they're moving the ball here on this possession, but just nothing real clean in this first half. Some of the struggles have continued against a defense that, quite frankly, just has not been very good through the first half of the year. Kresden Butler, an extra defensive back, who was just added to the roster checks in. 11th play of this drive. They had two third down conversions on this possession. Timeout taken by Rodgers. Before the foul, first charge timeout, Green Bay. Play clock was at one. We'll take a break. When we come back, third down and ten for Aaron Rodgers of the Packers offense. This game is sponsored by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. Third down and ten. 
With eight and a half to go on the half. Luke 58! Luke 58! Oh, come on! 319! Oh. 319! Rogers throws. Pass incomplete for Cobb. And another stall on offense for Green Bay. Wilson with good coverage on Randall Cobb and a punt from Maste again. Well, Terrell Austin, the defensive coordinator for the Lions, does an excellent job. He's not a coach that really likes to bring much pressure, but that time, instead of a four-man rush, they bring a five-man rush. They get a guy free in Rodgers' face. He's got to turn the ball loose and forces a punt. It's a good job defensively. End-over-end -end punt with Lance Moore staying away, and that's well played. Tapped down by Quentin Rollins inside the five. They'll mark it at the three. And that's good work by Mastay and Rollins. Yeah, outstanding job of the punt, but Rollins gets down the field, and he's able to turn around and locate it and then catch it. An excellent job by him of working to get down in position where he can make that play and down it inside the five-yard line. So for the Lions offensively, four possessions, four punts, one first down. They've run 14 plays for 25 yards, and they start this drive at the three. with help on the stop, a gain of three. Tomorrow, we've got cops on the edge, evil alliances, and an army of assassins. It's Gotham Rise of the Villains. All new tomorrow, right here on Fox. <laughs> they have added to the stadium right above where the Lions are snapping the ball. The back end of that end zone, second down and seven, where it is loud. Stafford has a first down. Calvin Johnson has his first catch. Well, Calvin Johnson, he's one on one outside. He's been battling an ankle injury throughout the week and didn't get much practice time. That's kind of been his thing, really, for the last several years. He's battled through a lot of nagging injuries here over the last several seasons, which has kept him from getting much work in practice. And I don't care who you are or how good you are, that eventually has an impact on your performance on Sundays, but they get a one-on-one -on -one look on second and long and off the play action, pick up a much needed first down. Demarius Randall is injured on that last play. And we'll take a break as Randall needs help getting off the field. We'll show you what happened to Demarius Randall. It happened after the play. First down, Detroit, down by three. Out of the backfield, Abdullah. Nice move out on the edge. Went around Palmer and gained seven. Here's that last play. And a little slide right there. Put strain on the... Look like the groin, but the first rule of broadcasting is don't try to speculate what an injury is, but that looked pretty clear cut. And Demarius Randall, who, you know, is a rookie, really has a lot of upside. They really like the young man, and he's made some game-saving plays. You know, here in the first part of this season, had his opportunity to start here today. We'll see whether or not his afternoon is finished. Theo Riddick in the backfield now. They fake it to him. Stafford avoids trouble and finds Riddick for the first down. Some of the things Stafford can do on display right there is he ducked the rush and found Theo Riddick for a first down. Uh, he's getting pretty good at this. Yeah, I mean, he's, got a, he's got a free rusher right in his face, and he's able to get away from him somehow and then find his outlet underneath. Turn what should have been a sack into a positive play. Lions now with more yards and first downs on this drive than their first four. Stafford just has to fall on it. Looked like he took his eye off the snap. Demarius Randall will go into the locker room and get looked at. 
you know, you think about these defensive backs for the Green Bay Packers. They've had a number of guys that have missed some time, but you know, I think they might have hit on Demarius Randall, and if he can continue to grow as he goes through his career, and then if certainly the second-round pick, Quentin Rollins, who made the nice play to start this drive inside the five-yard line, they got something they can build on if they hit on those two corners. Second down and 14, screen, Bell. And Bell is written out by Casey Hayward. Gain of nine, third down coming up. Here's Mike Hill with a game break. You got a low scoring game there. I got a wild one going on between the Saints and the Skins. It's Kirk Cousins finding Matt Jones, and Matt Jones is going to do the rest. Weaving his way through the defense, 78 yards for the score. Kirk Cousins already with three touchdown passes on the day. 21-14 skins. Joe Troy, you like that? <laughs> yeah, the Saints, they're used to playing those shootouts. Took 50 to take down the Giants a couple weeks ago. Third down and five. Stafford over the middle. Catch made, Ebron, and let's see where they mark him. Depends on the spot. Knocked down right at the marker. Yeah, that one's close. That's right on the marker where they came in. and Where he's standing in the yellow line, it looks like he got it, but it was awfully close. His knee's down there, and boy, I say this. It looked like on the play on the replay he got it where the line judge was standing and where his left foot was it was short of that yellow line and it is fourth down they're going to bring the punt team on for Detroit and I don't know that the Lions got the best spot right there that's obviously something that is challengeable if Jim Caldwell wants to challenge the spot he's talking upstairs to his support staff as to whether or not they got a picture that gives them reason to challenge this play and it is awfully close. Question is, is the left knee down? He's got some time now to make this decision because they're coming out with the chains to measure it. So he can make a decision whether he wants to challenge it or, in fact, if they're short, if he wants to go for it on fourth down. Well, they are one and seven. They already have the punt team out there, and now they're going to switch back and bring the offense back out there. The question on that replay is, is the left knee down before Ebron reaches and look like he got the line to gain? This crowd will be into it on fourth and inches. Well, the struggles that they've had running the football, Joe, I would expect to see Matthew Stafford on the quarterback sneak. I can't imagine coming back and handing it off and having that much yardage to gain just to get it back to the line of scrimmage with the problems that they've had rushing the ball. By the way, the play clock right now is going to be reset. It's down under 10. They reset it. Here we go. Stafford plows forward if he got a foot it should be enough for a first down and that same line judge with his left foot right on the line well, he got a little help from his fullback it looked initially like Green Bay had stopped him short of the line to gain and Michael Burton the rookie, he got in there and gave him a little nudge, and I think it might have been enough to pick this one up. Stafford thinks so. 12! 12! No signal yet, and we're going to get another measurement, I think. We are. So you get in there as a quarterback, and you know you've only got a foot that you've got to pick up, or whatever it might be, and you see all those bodies down in the trenches, and you just wonder how you're ever going to pick up that foot. I know that was a play high on your list. Yeah, we didn't even have it in our offense for the first seven years. I was okay with that. It looked to me like they picked this up, though, Joe. Looks like they did according to the line, and they did. First down, Detroit. The 
Detroit with all three timeouts remaining in a three point game and this will be the ninth play of the drive and if you're Jim Caldwell you're one and seven the balls inside your own territory just outside the 40 why not and they pick it up. Abdullah. Good play made off the edge. A flag is down, and so is Stafford. That's where they threw the flag, where Stafford got hit and dropped. Well, they run the fake reverse behind it, and Stafford's carrying out a fake, and he got blown up pretty good. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 95 on the defense. No contact to the helmet area of the quarterback. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's an interesting call because if he's carrying out a fake and he's acting as if he could possess the ball and be a runner, then he's treated as a runner. And you can tell that with that action in the backfield that he could have potentially have had the ball. And here they come and they take the hit on him and it's a big time hit it clearly is helmet to helmet but I'm not certain that should have been called Joe well, it's only the second flag thrown all game there's one for a defensive hold against Detroit on the first play from scrimmage it was declined so pretty clean game so far penalty takes it inside Green Bay territory of Dula ha ha Clinton Dix brings him down to the 40 and just as you say a clean game here's another flag holding offense number 87 10 yard penalty first down it's against the tight end Pettigrew right there in the face of John Hussey as he made the call to the crowd Demarius Randall has come back onto the field and is in there despite what they were saying was indeed a groin injury suffered earlier in this drive. Well, they get backed up now with the holding penalty on Pettigrew. Nevertheless, this is a nice drive, one that started on their own three-yard line. But, you know, one of the things that has hurt the Detroit Lions, a lot of, a lot of things have hurt this team. But they've just not been able to create any big plays. And as we've seen this drive, it's hard to move the football when you're not getting big chunks. Two-minute warning at Lambeau Field. Get apps, videos, and more at iTunes.com slash NFL. After a personal foul against Dayton Jones, a holding call against the Lions to bring up first and 20 as they trail by three. Two minutes left. Delayed handoff, Riddick, nothing. Casey Hayward down to make the play a loss of one. A really an outstanding call by Dom Capers. He is able to play this draw very well. As you said, they bring Casey Hayward off the slot. Mike Daniels, who's really having himself an outstanding season, he gets pressure once again into the backfield just for no gain. Timeout taken by Green Bay. They have one left. What's coming up at halftime, Kurt? Coming up at halftime, Johnny Football gets another start for the Browns in Pittsburgh. The Eagles host the Dolphins and hope to keep pace in the NFC East. We've got all that and a lot more, so stick around. Hmm. How's that, TB? No, mm, that's not good. America wants more me. You should know that by now, Mark. <laughs> They've used every nook and cranny of the studio. Promoting the Visa halftime. That's coming up shortly, a minute 52 to go in the half. Or TB. Love it. Second and 21. Stafford, Ebron. Nice hurdle. The third and long coming up. Went over the top of Demarius Randall. Good for Green Bay to see him back out there. And Ebron went right over him. Hey, Eric Ebron, the first round pick from last year, you know, really. Showing some improvement from where he was last year and a guy who has some big play ability. I tell you, if he can continue to mature and become the player that they expected when they picked him up, sure helped this offense. Third down and 13. J. 
Just got it away. Pass is way short. Caught by Ebron, wrapped up by Haha -Ha Clinton Dix. A gain of three. It's fourth down. And we'll see what the Lions want to do here. That was only the second play they've run inside Green Bay territory the entire half. Yeah, Minnesota had a lot of success a few games ago against this Detroit offense, bringing pressure. They didn't handle it very well. Don Capers, he's brought some pressure here in this first half. He does there on third down, forces Stafford to get the ball out of his hands quickly. You know, no chance whatsoever to pick up the first down. Detroit now 0 for 6 on third down, and we'll see if Green Bay can finish the half the way they started it by moving the ball. We expected them to pick up where they left off in the second half against Carolina on the road where they spread the defense out and started to rack up yards and points, but that hasn't happened so far. No, it hasn't, and I'm sure that the frustration continues, even with a three-point lead. I think they expect a lot more than what they've shown here in this first half. This one is checking up inside the five. Good job by Corey Fuller downfield, and with no timeouts, the drive will start at the five for the Packers up three. More frustration for this Green Bay offense. Makes you wonder what Vince Lombardi would say at a time like this. What the hell's going on out here? They're too good for this. <laughs> Shown the ability to move the ball, but they've stalled after that first drive. Pass is caught, what a play. Richard Rodgers made the catch. He's slow to get up, and Quandre digs is there to just knock him down immediately. Yeah, he makes a nice play on a, on a bigger guy and able to come in low immediately and make the tackle. Second and 10, pass caught by Adams, and then he gets hit by Abdul Kadus. Third down coming up, clock running, no timeouts for the Packers. Third down and two, and Starks won't get it. And now Detroit's got to take a timeout. And this crowd is letting the offense hear their frustration. It's fourth down timeout, Lions. Uh, they just con they continue to be out of sync offensively, whether it's in the passing game or in the protection up front along the offensive line. But just too many guys turned loose. We saw it last week with guys having free runs then at Aaron Rodgers, and this time Jason Jones is turned loose inside and he makes the play on Starks and you can see the frustration there on Mike McCarthy's face and this is just not something that they're accustomed to it's one thing to say well we played good defenses the last two weeks on the road which they have but against a defense that has really had their problems and to be doing it here at Lambeau Field is a real shock to me well you saw the numbers three and outs for this offense that's led by Aaron Rodgers the reigning MVP in the NFL second time he's won that past Super Bowl champion the dynamic Aaron Rodgers that had three three and outs in this first half and this is the fifth straight punt for the Packers. And now the Lions will have a chance to get on the board. Two timeouts left. Waiting for it is Tate, fair catch. Good field position for the Lions at their own 47. There's been changes on the sideline, first with the way the plays come in, who's actually calling the plays that brought Alex Van Pelt down from up above. Right, but it really hasn't changed yet. No, and Tom Clements is the one calling the plays. First year to do that. I thought Mike McCarthy, I've said it many times, one of the more underrated play callers in this league. You just wonder how much longer he's going to accept this kind of play before he retakes the play calling duties because I can't remember a stretch of them looking like this with Mike McCarthy as the play caller. Stafford now with room, and he's got Calvin Johnson. They will wind the clock. 35 and counting left and a timeout taken by Detroit their second and they're right now on the edge of field goal range as it is Calvin Johnson got loose finally yeah what a beast he is when you're playing man coverage as Sam Shields is and 
you know, you go back to the Lions going for it on fourth down, Joe, by them converting that, they didn't get any points off of that drive, but what they did was flip field position. So they back up the Packers. Defensively, they force a three and out, and now they give the offense a great opportunity with good field position here at the end of this first half to come away with some points. Who knows, maybe a touchdown, but if nothing else, an opportunity to try to tie this game up. That 19-yarder to Johnson, the longest play of the game for either team. First down, Detroit. Stafford is protected. Ebron can't haul it in. Hyde was on his back. Second and ten. Well, the longer you keep a team in it like this, Joe, I mean, we, we came into this ball game, of course, a 1-7 and seven team, and as we've talked about, a group that had really struggled both sides of the ball, and you say, okay, well, the Packers have an opportunity then to get things going, and it just hasn't happened on the offensive side. Defensively, they've done a nice job, but you let teams hang around like this, a lot of bad things can happen, and this has been a lot tighter here in this first half than anyone could have imagined for the Packers. Stafford pass is caught, not for much. Golden Tate made the catch, and there defending was Casey Hayward. And the final timeout taken by Detroit. Typically, you want to keep that timeout in your pocket for the field goal unit. But now they're out of timeouts. Tate, little Gimby. Next week, Fox NFL Sunday returns. Doubleheader. There are the matchups, including the Packers and the Vikings in what will be a good one in the NFC North. The two teams come in tied at the top at 6-2. and two. Our coverage starts next week at 11 Eastern with Fox NFL kickoff, followed by America's number one pregame show, Fox NFL Sunday. The boy, Minnesota, they're on a heck of a run. They've won four in a row. They play later this afternoon against the Oakland Raiders at Oakland, which will be a tough game for them. But the game next week shaping up between the Vikings and Packers. That's going to be a big one within the NFC North. Third down and seven here for the Lions, who are 0 for 6 on third down. Packers ended up a 10-point favorite here at home, open to 12. Just a three-point game and a chance for the Lions. Seems to be a little confusion right now with the Packers defensively trying to get lined up. To the end zone for Johnson, out of the reach of everybody. It's fourth down, and still without a third down conversion are the Lions. Prater will try and tie it, a 49-yarder coming. Well, they turn Golden Tate loose. You see Demarius Randall, he lets him go to the flat. He tries to then cover deeper, and had Matthew Stafford have been able to locate Tate, he catches that ball, picks up the first down, and then some. Raider 8 for 8. 49-yard try here. A season-long 52. Prater drills it. And this game is tied. The Lions have not won in Wisconsin since December of 91. And it looks like this thing's going to be tied at the half. Packers three points in the first half today. Their fewest since December 15th of 2013 at Dallas. They trailed 26 to three and came back and won that game against Tony Romo. And the Dallas Cowboys 37 to 36 was the final and that was not behind Aaron Rodgers. That was behind Matt Flynn. And the Cowboys forgot that running the ball might take time off the clock. Visa halftime is coming up. Plenty to talk about on the Visa halftime as we play here in week 10. 12 seconds left in the half. And without any timeouts left, this will be kneeled down and a tie game at the half. As Aaron Rodgers, you can just see it all over him. Frustration. Not the same of what we saw last week in Carolina until they kicked it into gear in the second half and certainly after that 
seventy seven yard passing day at Denver two weeks ago. You know, we were at their facility yesterday when we visited with Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers and you certainly didn't sense there was any panic. You know within the building a lot of confidence between those two men the really the leaders of this team and and yet nothing has really changed they just had a tough time and that happens in offensive football but this has been a long stretch for them but just not playing with the consistency that we're accustomed to Packers have won 12 straight at home haven't heard that noise in a long time booing as they head off the field into the dressing room to talk about it 3-3 at the half Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles the Visa halftime starts right now today's excitement brought to you by Nissan Diamond brought to you by Nissan. Freddie Aldis bringing out something from the uh, the funk closet. That little video montage. And now we welcome you inside our broadcast booth here at Lambeau. Uh, you just said something to me before we popped up on everybody's TV, and that is let's keep an eye on Mike McCarthy. You wonder if this continues the way it's gone, if maybe he doesn't take the play calling back. Yeah, I mean, there's a part of me that doesn't think he will because he's not one who's quick to react, but this has been going on now for for a few games, and it's just surprising against the Lions defense that has, that has really struggled. I, I just, I know from experience that offensively you get into some of these ruts, even the best of teams do offensively, to where the timing's not there, you're not seeing the field cleanly. I, I, I don't think Aaron Rodgers is seeing things quite as clean as he usually does going back to last week's game and then here in this first half has missed some guys that he's had opportunities to get the ball to but uh, we'll see whether or not this Green Bay defense can continue to do what they're doing and get the ball back to their offense with a short field obviously Detroit getting the ball here to start this half Abdullah will bring it out and he's got room Amir Abdullah he's into Green Bay territory inside the 15 to the end zone a reach and he is just short of a touchdown by half a yard. Micah Hyde saved it, but the return is 104 yards. And Amir Abdullah's got Mike McCarthy shaking his head. Well, Kyle Van Noy, he comes in and makes a big block that helps spring. Amir Abdullah up the middle of that kick return does an outstanding job of hitting it. And what a start here to start this second half for this Detroit Lion team. 104 yards on the return. And no touchdown. Came within half a yard of a score. They marked him at the one. And on first and goal, it's Bell left side going backward. First guy there was Peppers. Neal was there as well. And this is a Detroit offense that does not have a rushing touchdown since week three. Back to the return. Yeah, another look at that return, just right up the gut. Just an outstanding job leading the convoy of blockers. Abdullah gets in behind him. A saving touchdown tackle right there by Micah Hyde. And on first down, Peppers gets the pressure in the backfield for a minus yardage on the running play. They drafted Abdullah to be the home run hitter. He just hit one off the top of the wall. Second and goal. Timeout taken by Detroit. It's the first time in this game that either team's been inside the red zone. So not only did we have a first half with no touchdowns, neither team got inside the 20 of their opponent until that 104-yarder from Amir Abdullah. And it'll be second down and goal. Only two rushing touchdowns all year for Detroit. And as I said, none since week three at Denver. Hey, listen up, listen up. Hey. Well, they're barely averaging over a yard a carry. So it's hard to imagine they're going to punch it in here on the ground. They're going to have to go into the air. I look for Calvin Johnson with his size. He's at the top of the screen. With Abdullah behind him and now in motion.
They toss it to Tate. Got around one tackle. Gets a block. Cannot get around Matthews. And they're trying trick plays down here inside the five to try and punch it in. It's third and goal. Well, it's telling, Joe, that they just don't feel that they've got the horses along that offensive front in order to get a push and drive the ball into the end zone. They tried. There was nothing there. You try to bounce it then on first down. You lose yardage. Try with a misdirection play on second down. This is going to be huge for this Packers defense. They're able to make a stop here. And now with too many men out on the field, Green Bay has to take a timeout. It'll be third down and goal. That was the longest kick return in Lions history without scoring a touchdown. 104 yards and the hustle of Micah Hyde has presented Green Bay here with this opportunity where if they can make a stop on third and goal, that's a major win for the Packers if they give up only three. Yeah, that play, we'll keep an eye on what that play means as we move through the remainder of this second half with Micah Hyde making a key tackle here on the one yard line. This is demoralizing for an offense. If you get the ball where you get it to start this drive and you're not able to come away with a touchdown, it doesn't get any more demoralizing than that for an offense. We'll see what happens here on third and goal. They fake it to Tate. Stafford, touchdown as he finds the tight end Pettigrew. And on the first third down conversion of the game for the Lions, it's a touchdown to take their first lead of the afternoon. Well, we've seen Jim Bob Cooter now on a few situations move the pocket, try to buy Matthew Stafford some time. When you do that down here, you only then have half the field to work. But Pettigrew shows the block, he comes out, Stafford puts it on him. That's a good job of finish, finishing off a third down in order to come away with a touchdown. Two-yard touchdown throw to Pettigrew and for Brandon, his first of the year. Prater to make it 10-3. He cannot. That's a big miss. And the second of the year for Matt Prater. 9-3, Lions on top. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. By Burger King, introducing new Buffalo chicken fries, a better way to Buffalo. By Miller Lite, back in its original bottle, but not for long. It's Miller time. And by the all-new LG V10, capture the in-between moments. The great run with Vince Lombardi here with the Packers was finished in 1967. And from that point on until Ron Wolf took over here in 1991, the Packers had just a handful of winning seasons. Ron Wolf just turned this franchise around. He inherited Leroy Butler and Sterling Sharp, but not much more than that. The signing of Reggie White, maybe one of the best trades in the history of the league by getting Brett Favre. And now a Hall of Famer back to the touchdown to Pettigrew. You see the job that Pettigrew does initially. He's engaged in Julius Peppers and Matthew Stafford able to find him underneath. Delivers a good ball. And as I said, that would have been awfully demoralizing for this Lions team had they not been able to score. That kickoff return, Joe, almost gave was for more yards than the Lions had in the entire first half offensively. But obviously a great way to start this second half. Missed field or the missed extra point clearly could come back to haunt him. Here's Starks on first down. With that down to Aaron Andrews, what'd you learn, Aaron? Talked to Mike McCarthy coming out of the half, and I said, why is this offense so out of sync? And he said, mistakes. Dropping the ball, not making great passes. He said, we're not running it well. All of it needs to be corrected. I did ask him if Aaron Rodgers is okay. You guys mentioned he's missing some throws. We've seen him rubbing his foot and his arm. He says he looks fine to me. How does he look to you? Second down and eight. Rodgers keeps it. Throws it low. And off the hands of James Jones. And we've seen Rodgers miss some throws now. It's third down and eight. Aaron, finish it off. 
I'll tell you, I'm not going to evaluate how Aaron Rodgers looks, but after Detroit scored, he looked over at me, rolled his eyes, shook his head. You guys are asking if Mike McCarthy is going to call any of these plays, kind of change it up. I will tell you, when the offense went out on the field, he grabbed his Microsoft Surface tab, looked at some plays, and started going over them before he threw it back over his shoulder, guys. Third down and eight here. Trying to avoid their fourth three and out. It's Adams incomplete, no flag. Nevin Lawson with the coverage, and it is three and out. Well, there was certainly contact. I'm not sure who exactly initiated. As you can see, Nevin Lawson, 24. Looked like Devontae Adams might have been the guy who came in initially with the hands and initiated the contact. The officials, they let it go, and they're still challenging the second-year player. Nevin Lawson, but he wins on that one. Another punt from Mastin. He doesn't hit a very good one at all. See where they mark it. On Green Bay's side of the 50, Detroit will have the ball after a 25-yard punt leading by six. To review, the Lions got the 104-yard kickoff return by Amir Abdullah. Converted on their first third down of the game when they scored the touchdown to Pettigrew. And then Matt Prater missed the extra point. 9-3 game. Second missed extra point by Prater. Here's Bell. There's just nowhere to run. Look at all those green jerseys out there. Palmer was in there, but he wasn't alone. Mike Neal as well. There have been 31 missed extra points coming into the day. Eight missed all of last year. And Prater with his second missed extra point now that it's basically a 33-yard field goal. Well, it's a six-point game. The longest run of the day for the Lions, just six yards, not being able to run it, but because of the score, what it is, they can at least continue to try to, even though it's been so futile. Green Bay defense has played well for second down and 11. Just a smothering attack, and Stafford had players in his face immediately. Pressure by Daniels, and it's third and 11. Well, we got Michael Ola there at right tackle. He gets beat immediately, and you got Julius Peppers, who's free on the rush, and you know, Stafford just has no chance. About getting tired of that too. Third down and 11. Blitz. Pass is caught. And well short of the first down is Golden Tate. And this defense, this is the best this defense has looked in a while for the Green Bay Packers. That is a bright spot so far today. Well, it really is. I mean, they, they have completely shut down the running game for the Detroit Lions. And as a result, Jim Bob Cooter, the offensive coordinator, when you're constantly trying to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands to keep from getting hit and giving up sacks, it's, you can't convert third and longs. You have to throw those kinds of passes like we just saw. And the Packers just shut it down. Green Bay Packers have gone back-to-back -back weeks without a sack defensively. They don't have one today, but plenty of pressure. Rodgers back to work. Down six. This game is sponsored by Nissan. Innovation that excites. You take out the one-play kneel down before the half. The Packers have six straight punts, including four three and outs. It's time for them to get it going again. Rodgers keeps it. And now he misses Kuhn. They are so out of sync. Everything is just off. Second and ten. Well, the fans are letting him know about it, too. They wanted to try to take a shot down the middle to Devontae Adams, but played very well by Detroit. Safety stays deep and just unable to stay ahead of the chains. This Detroit defense has allowed the opponent to complete at 73 percent 
Talking about the quarterback, that's the highest for any defense all time. Rodgers, one for two on this drive, and Adams is going to be marked out of bounds short of a first down. Now this time Darius Slay was in coverage. He slips as Devontae Adams was coming out of the break. That's what created the separation point. I'd like to see the mark of that ball again. See where Adams went out and where they marked it. Here is Starks. It doesn't matter because Starks with a second effort picks up the first down. That's a big first down. It's third down and one and Starks is able to plow ahead, pick up five and try and get something going for this Packers offense. Back to Starks. Tripped up. Gain of a yard. That was a big third down conversion for this Packers team as frustration continues to mount. James Starks, he just was not going to be denied on third down. He even ran over his own offensive lineman. T.J. Lang gets tripped at the end of this play, and that should have been called on Jason Jones for tripping. They missed it. This one spins Starks around. Good move out on the edge. Tulloch on the tackle. Third down coming up, and you can see Starks is mad getting up because of this trip by Jones, 91. And right now, left tackle, David Bakhtiari. He's He's hurt on this play. He's trying to regroup and gather himself before this next snap. Third down and five. Rogers. Got a man, Rodgers, to the 45, 21 to Richard Rodgers. And a first down for the Packers. Well, Rodgers starts to the left of the formation, and he continues to work across. He becomes the guy as he works into Aaron Rodgers' vision, and they find him for the first down. Here starts now, that 21-yarder to Richard Rodgers, the biggest play from scrimmage by either team today. Starks carries it on first down, brought down by Abdul Kadus, second and eight. I'll tell you, this Detroit defense, they've been tough. They haven't given up much. And they're getting pressure on Aaron, and they're stopping the run game. They've been solid. Pass incomplete. No flag is thrown. Devontae Adams, the target, with Nevin Lawson tested again. Rodgers wanted the flag. Looked like there was some contact. Probably a good no call. Jordy Nelson is here. He was catching passes before the game. And Jimmy Johnson talked about it at halftime. Can't overlook what they miss without Jordy Nelson. Well, there's no denying you miss Jordy Nelson. The guy's too great of a player. Three nineteen. Three nineteen. On third and eight, Rogers passes tipped, knocked down by Whitehead, and that forces fourth down. Good play by Tahir Whitehead back in that zone. He's trying to get the ball, it looked like, to Abradaris. There just wasn't much there. A lot of bodies in the middle of the field, and Aaron Rodgers probably fortunate that ball got tipped. Yeah, that was Jones who got his left hand on it right in front of Whitehead. There were two players there for Detroit. And now Maste with a punt. Moore lets it go over his head and checks up again. Lions will have it as they lead by six. Here at Lambeau. Checking the right leg of David Bakhtiari on the sideline for Green Bay while the Lions offense is back on the field. Michael Ola is taking over at right tackle for Adrian Waddle. Not an injury issue, we're told. They just made the switch. 
And they're the last time the Lions had it. Pass over the middle, caught wide open is Lance Moore. Good for 15 yards and a first down for the first play of this drive. Well, it's kind of nice when you get a little protection in the pocket. Matthew Stafford, he was able to step up, and Lance Moore against that zone coverage is able to find the hole in the middle of the field, and Stafford finds him. Former offensive coordinator Joe Lombardi was with Lance Moore in New Orleans. First down from the 22. Joint Bell. One of the few times he's had a little daylight, except five brought down by Nate Palmer. And Joyke Bell, he's a downhill runner and, and a really a solid player. He was their featured back last year when he rushed for over 800 yards. And they brought in Amir Abdullah, and eventually he's going to be the guy that they hope can take over that position. But Joyke Bell with a solid run. Second down and five. 51 is the same. <laughs> Stafford protected again, and this time it's dropped by Ebron. Eric Ebron was a first round pick last year, had only 25 catches, one touchdown. And this is a ball that's got to be caught. Yeah, you got to catch that for an offense that has really had their struggles as well. And Starting to get a little bit of a rhythm going. You know, they complete the pass to Lance Moore. They get a nice run there from Joyke Bell, and they're rolling. And, and then you drop a ball that would have given them a first down. Third drop of the day for the Lions, third down and five. is caught by Calvin Johnson for a first down on third down and five a completion of 16 yards well Matthew Stafford he's got a guy barreling down on him he knows he's got to hang in the pocket to deliver the ball to pet or excuse me to Calvin Johnson and you see what Stafford's dealing with and Dayton Jones who's gotten more playing time in this game he was the one who came uncovered but an excellent job by Stafford knowing he's going to take the hit and delivering the first down throw Theo Riddick in the slot up top. Here's Bell. Got a yard. Nate Palmer, who's been under fire for the job he's done at inside linebacker. The Packers really lost a good one when Sam Barrington, their inside linebacker, was injured at Chicago week one with a foot injury on IR and they have not been able really to fill that hole. Oh, uh, you look at what Detroit's done here. It's a little bit like that drive that started on their own three in the first half. They're able to get it off the goal line. This one started on the seven. So if nothing else, they flip field position by moving the football the way that they have. Just got it away. Pressure. Riddick. Still on his feet. A missed tackle. That was Peppers who missed him. And Theo Riddick picks up 11, maybe 12, and another first down. Well, I really like Theo Riddick and the things that he's able to do out of the backfield as a receiver. He's a pretty dynamic guy, and they catch the Packers who try to bring in some pressure. Julius Peppers, it looked like he was the one dropping underneath and gave Riddick an opportunity to make a play. Former wide receiver at Notre Dame was Riddick. Stafford's picked it up as this game has gone on. He's had a little better protection as well. On first down, it's Bell left side and into a big body of Latroy Guyon. No game. Carolina Lightning 11. See how he's picked it up after a one for seven start. And the one touchdown to Pettigrew, the only touchdown of the day. The thing that's pretty amazing about Matthew Stafford, you get hit as much as he's been hit this year. A natural tendency for a quarterback is to start looking at the rush. And I have not noticed that from him in getting ready for this game nor here this afternoon. He continues to keep his eyes downfield and look for the open guys.
Delayed handoff, Abdullah. Amir Abdullah is going to get nine brought down by Clinton Dix. Third down coming up, third and one. Well, Mike Daniels, he gets the pressure. That's who Abdullah has to be able to avoid. Otherwise, this is lost yardage. That was an outstanding job. He's got some playmaking ability. The problem with him has been hanging on to the football. It goes back to when he was at Nebraska. He had an issue with fumbling, and he's had the issues here in his first season. Four times only losing one. But he's one of those guys that can certainly make things happen when the ball in his hands. There's a big third down and one. Stafford pass is caught for a first down. This time Ebron hangs on. And another third down conversion, that a 13-yard completion. And the Lions are getting on a roll. Yeah, once again, pressure in Stafford's face. He's able to move around a little bit and deliver the ball to Ebron, who really does an excellent job. Not the most accurate of throws, but he's able to haul that one in after the drop that he had earlier on this drive. Lions three for four on third down this half. First half, they were 0 for 7. This ball was tipped at the line. And you could hear Stafford yelling out, Riola, Riola, the longtime <laughs> center. Who is gone? Travis Swanson has taken his spot. And BJ Raji got his left hand up and knocked it down. Yeah, they've kind of missed old Dominic Riola around here. You know, Travis Swanson took over at center this year. He had five starts last year as a rookie, but he was a four year starter at the center position in Arkansas and got handed the job when Ri Riola left. Riola had a heck of a career for the Lions. Second and ten. Here is Riddick, gets a yard. Nick Perry on the stop, so now third down, but easily inside field goal range for Prater are the Lions right now as they lead by six. Well, this is just an outstanding drive by Detroit. You know, you're backed up inside the 10-yard line to be able to take the ball off the goal line and get down here into a position to potentially come away with some points and make this a two-possession game is really big. Oh, big, five. big five. Blitz coming. Pass is picked off. Clinton Dix with a huge defensive play for the Green Bay Packers. Just starting to think the Packers needed to make a play defensively, and it's Ha Ha Clinton Dix. And he secured it. Big pickoff by number 21. Boy, that is an enormous play made by Ha Ha Clinton Dix, who was on all the highlight shows last week because he got into a sideline altercation verbally with Peppers and then physically with B.J. Raji at Carolina. But he just stepped up and gave the Packers exactly what they needed. Let's go back to the interception. Well, Stafford saw, you know, he had good protection, so he knows immediately where he wants to go with the ball. I'm not sure that it looked to me like maybe a miscommunication on the route because Morgan Burnett was in the middle of the field. There really wasn't anywhere for Stafford to throw it at the angle that was being taken by the receiver. And just a huge mistake and a great play by Hodge to Clinton Dix. On second and nine, it's Rodgers to his right. And he cannot outrun Jason Jones. And there are less than 40 seconds left in the third quarter. No gain on that carry. It'll go down as a sack of Aaron Rodgers, and it's third down and nine. Boy, this defense, they've just been harassing Aaron Rodgers throughout this ball game and just, just been suffocating all day long. Go! 
Third down and nine. Rodgers. Receiver got hung up. That was Randall Cobb, and there is no flag. Coverage by Quandre Diggs, and after getting the interception, it's three and out for this frustrated offense. And that's the end of quarter number three. It'll be fourth down when we start the fourth. 9-3 Lions back after this from your local Fox station. Fourth quarter begins with a punt for the Packers. 24 straight wins against Detroit at home. That streak is on the line for a 6-2 club. Chance for a return well covered downfield by the rookie Aaron Ripkowski. Golden Tate nothing on the return. And we'll look at some of the pictures of the day and we've Seen frustration, conversation, some heated exchanges on the sidelines for each offensive group. There's no doubt there's a lot of frustration on both parts, but, you know, for the Lions, you know, even though they haven't done a great job either, the fact that they're leading, you know, here at Lambeau, as we've pointed out, they just have not had success here at this venue. I mean, their frustration certainly not even close to the level that Green Bay's is. Starting at the 45, up by six. Stafford coming off the interception. Going to put it right back up. Sideline pass is caught. Was it inbounds? Calvin Johnson, the officials get together. We'll take a look first. And they're saying it's a catch. Knee is down. Ball is secured. I think it's a catch, too. There was a guy who used to do this job before us that once said one knee equals two feet it's a great job i mean this this lions offense is starting to get some things going and stafford's heating up here's riddick lions hurried it up no chance to challenge didn't look like mccarthy would win the challenge anyway but we'll give it another look here's the catch the left knee is down that means he's in bounds as long as he secures it to the end of the catch and he did Second down and nine now at the 39 for the Lions up by six. Well, Matthew Stafford, I mean, they still got a little ways to go, but Matthew Stafford, unlike the previous possession, he has to understand how important three points is right now in this ballgame for Detroit. Play action. Stafford has to get rid of it, and lucky it didn't get picked. At what point do you start to give Jim Caldwell some credit? for having this team ready to play, and Terrell Austin, the defensive coordinator, the defense has been outstanding. But for a team that's been through the upheaval in the front office, with the coaching staff, one and seven coming on the road in a place where they haven't won, in a state where they haven't won since 1991, here they are leading by six with the ball. They've done an outstanding job coming off a of bye week, especially that defense and Terrell Austin. Third down and nine. Stafford pass is caught, but short of a first down is Calvin Johnson. The ball is inside the 35, and they're going to bring Prater on to attempt a long field goal. Yeah, not a decision to be made here, knowing you can extend your lead to nine points if they're able to make this field goal. So it becomes a two-score game. This a 51-yard try. Hit from 49 earlier. If he misses, Green Bay has great field position. This one is good. And it's 12-3 Detroit. And Prater is hit from 49 and now 51. And the Lions at 1-7. Lead by 9 on the road at Lambeau. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Cialis, by McDonald's, teaming up with the NFL like never before, and by Volkswagen. Get a great deal during the Volkswagen Sign Then Drive event. Located just a few miles away in De Pere, Luna Coffee. They've been brewing their own coffee for over 15 years, and members of our 
crew will be headed back home to their respective homes with pounds of that coffee. From Luna, what's it going to be for the Packers? Down by nine. They need a good start, and Micah Hyde's got him across the 30. Brought down by Sam Martin. 31-yard return by Hyde. The year was 1991. Brett Favre was playing for the Atlanta Falcons. Matthew Stafford was three years old. Looks like he's about nine in that picture. And the Taurus was Ford's number one selling vehicle. Never mind by Nirvana came out that year. We all learned about Norman Schwarzkopf. It's the last time the Detroit Lions won in the state of Wisconsin. Still nowhere to go with the ball. And behind the receiver Perillo is Aaron Rodgers. And Rodgers looks as off as we've seen him in a long time. I mean, there is, you know, he's got to move around. He's got to navigate some bodies. But these are things that we've seen him do throughout his career. And he's got an open guy right in the middle of the field. And for the second week in a row, we've just seen him miss guys uncharacteristically. And now a flag that shuts down the play on a false start. Man. False start. Offense, number 69. Five-yard penalty, second down. It's on Bakhtiari. This is the second best starting field position for the Packers. Aaron Rodgers is at 55% completing passes here today. The last time at home they've gone a game without a touchdown was in 06 in a win against the Vikings behind Brett Favre. Well, we talked about the loss of Jordy Nelson, but some of the things that we've seen that they've struggled with, it, it doesn't matter that Jordy Nelson's not on the field. I mean, it's just simple fundamental football that they're not executing. Here's one that is incomplete to Adams. That was a good throw by Aaron Rodgers, and Adams couldn't hang on. Nevin Lawson on the coverage. Yeah, it really was. I mean, he's got to lay this out on the boundary and, you know, hard to concentrate for Devontae Adams. Lawson is all over him and trying to make the play on the ball, but it was there, but a tough catch if he had been able to make that one. Third down and 15 now. Over the middle pass, caught Perillo. And that is a huge catch for number 80. His second of the game and fourth of the year. Well, this is just a great throw by Aaron Rodgers to Perillo because it was outstanding coverage up the seam. There was really nowhere for him to put that ball. Here's Perillo again. Well, maybe that's the catch that's going to jumpstart this offense. Perillo runs the seam up the middle. And the coverage that Whitehead, Whitehead has on him is outstanding. He's got to put it up high so Perillo can go up and make a play. Great concentration. And those are the plays you need. You need somebody to step up and make a play for you when you're struggling, and he did. And it's Perillo. Now Bakhtiari gets attention. We'll take a big break. David Bakhtiari got his foot stepped on. Don't know if that added to right knee issues. Now Don Barclay takes over at left tackle. Second and five. Packers down by nine. Three nineteen. Three nineteen. Pass is out of the reach of Adams. And he comes out of that looking for a flag. Adams and Lawson, they have been battling all afternoon. Well, they sure have. And we talked about it on the first possession when Devontae oh. was targeted so much. You see the grab by Lawson on the back of the jersey, and the officials miss it. Rodgers sees it. Adams knew of it, but, yeah, that's been highly contested over there between those two throughout this game. Packers likely in four-down territory, down by nine, third down and five. Hey, we got to go. we got to go. 41, Monday. Monday, Monday. Ready, ready. Set. Slow. Pass is incomplete, no flag. Adams was looking for one, and he gets right into the face of an official. As he was working on Lawson, now they're going to throw a flag at the end of it. And it is likely on Adams for this at the end of it. I think you're right, Joe. I think it's going to be called on the Packers. It looked like, like Nevin Lawson was even expecting to After see a the play. play. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense number 17. 
15 yard penalty. Fourth down. And that takes it from four down territory to a punt. They had left their offense out there, but the penalty on Devontae Adams, who was grabbed and held on the previous play, didn't get the call. Was looking for one on third down, didn't get it. And then his temper took over. Yeah, obviously it could have been called, should have been called on the second down play, could have been called on the third. Like I said, Nevin Lawson, he, the way he reacted was like he expected to see a penalty against him. But clearly, emotions get the better of Devontae Adams. And these officials have been consistent. They've been letting these guys play throughout this game. Mastay hits it sideways. They're going to mark it just outside. Well, now they move. Mark it just outside the 25. The notorious counter McGregor has taken over this season of the ultimate fighter. They call me an instigator. What the? A troublemaker. A wild card and a rebel. So don't miss an all new Ultimate Fire Wednesdays only on FS1. Well, we've seen Mastay hit a 25-yard punt. This one a 32-yard punt. With a chance to pin the Lions deep, he can't. They marked it at the 25. Stafford, Bell, out of the backfield. And Clay Matthews grabs a hold of the hair. And a flag is thrown on the play. Nothing illegal about this. If you're going to wear your hair long, you got to be prepared for some of that. That cannot feel good. If anybody should know it would be Clay Matthews. <laughs> That's right. There is no foul on the play for a face mask. Second down. But it's good for a catch and run of eight yards. You know, not really any big plays by Detroit. You know, but here in this second half, they've been able to string some drives together. It's been, the yards have been hard to come by, but they have developed a little more consistency. Of, as we see Bakhtiari, he's heading in the locker room to get checked out. Second and two. Here's Bell. Palmer made the stop. Looks to be just a little short of a first down. Let's go to Kurt with a game break. Bradshaw says you have no idea how much it hurts when they grab your long hair like that. Ryan Tannehill to Jarvis Landry. Dolphins came back from 16-3 down in the first. They lead Philadelphia 20-16. Joe Troy and Aaron, Zach, uh, excuse me, Mark Sanchez now in at quarterback for Sam Bradford, who's out for the day with an injured shoulder, making things worse for Philly. Wow. No doubt about that. Here's a big third and one, Kurt. Burton the fullback and it's fourth down and that is another big stop by the Packers defense well the exchange doesn't look real clean here as they collide that's enough to kind of slow things up and right tackle Michael Ola he gets stoned as well and just no movement along that offensive line that's a great job defensively they get a good third or a good first down play the Lions do and they're unable to convert on the possession and force a punt. Let's go, D. Let's go to work. Hyde will let it head out of bounds inside the 25. And they'll mark it at the 22. Well, this frustrated Packer offense heads back to work down nine. This game is sponsored by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. 12 Packer possession, the first 11 possessions have produced 11 first downs and three points. Rodgers flipping it to starts incomplete. We've seen some calls that have not been made against the Lions. And that was the last one that got the flag on Devontae Adams. And McCarthy spent that whole last break talking to this officiating crew. 
as letting them play in the secondary is one thing, but grabbing the jersey is another, I'm sure, according to Mike McCarthy. He has a legitimate beef. Here's Richard Rodgers. There's just nothing there. And unable to get downfield of the Packers, it's third down and nine as Wilson is there to help on the stop. It's pretty incredible. I mean, when you look at this game coming in and just how porous Detroit had been defensively, and I tell you, they have just not let up on this Packers offense. So a lot of it has been with the Packers' execution and lack of, but they just have not given up anything. Third down and nine. Pass is incomplete. Now a flag. To hear Whitehead in coverage on Rodgers, and it's against the Lions. To hear Whitehead's right That's here. That's interference. Defense, number 59. The ball replaced at the spot of the foul. First down. A lot of contact. The arm around the body of Rodgers. A little grab on the jersey. And that's the only accepted penalty against the Lions defense this entire game. 13 yards and a big first down. Delayed handoff starts. Good play by Glover Quinn, the safety, a gain of five. Yeah, Glover Quinn, all pro from a year ago, and a lot of times when you're one and seven, some good performances get overlooked. And Glover Quinn has had himself a nice season. As much yards as they've given up, it would have been even worse had he not been there to make some of the plays he's made this year. On second and five, Rodgers, flag is thrown, pass is caught. But the flag was thrown like it's a hold against Green Bay. But we'll see. Could be hands to the face. That's what Rodgers is hoping for. But it's not. It's a hold against Green Bay. Holding. Offense number 70. Ten-yard penalty. Second down. It's T.J. Lang. He's right there in the middle of your screen, number 70. And Lodi Nada was the guy bringing the pressure, and the right hand got him. And I'm sure Mike McCarthy's oh. saying, hey, you know, and let us grab if you're going to let them grab. It erases the five yard completion from the spot of that foul, brings up second down and 15. For Aaron Rodgers. Just four men on the rush. Here's Cobb underneath. Breaks one tackle. Out to the 44. Got through Abdul Kadus. Picked up 13, third and two coming. Yeah, big completion. Haven't been able to get Randall Cobb too involved in this offense here today, but an excellent job there on second and long, creating a third and two. They got one on one across the board if they want to take a shot down the field. Rodgers, flag is thrown. James Jones can't make the catch. Slay in coverage. Well, Jason Jones for the Lions is signaling it's on the Packers. Holding. Holding. Offense number 75. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. You wonder now with declining this penalty, which they've done officially, if Green Bay will go for it on fourth and two. And right now they leave Aaron Rodgers out there. I, I don't know about that decision along the sideline. But if you're Detroit, you get a stop on fourth down, you take over. Well, you get a chance to back him up to third and 12. And they're going to go for it. Not surprised obviously that they're going for it here even though they're they're on their own side of the 50 but down two scores they've got to get something going with over seven minutes to play I think Jim Caldwell now is talking to the official I don't know if he's seen if maybe he can accept that penalty or there's certainly a discussion going on there amongst the officials Detroit has elected to choose the enforcement of a penalty it'll be third down 10 yards well, I'm interested to talk to Mike Pereira about this because that decision was made after Jim Caldwell saw the offense stay out there. Enforcement of the 10-yard penalty. 
Well, somebody better come over and talk to Mike McCarthy about that. They decline the penalty. McCarthy leaves his offense out there. And then Jim Caldwell calls the official over and says, no, we're going to accept the penalty, which brings up third down and 12. John Hussey, our referee. We'll check in with Mike when we can. Meanwhile, a big third down and 12. And now a timeout taken by the Lions. Hey, Mike Pereira, I know you're watching a lot of games back there in Los Angeles, but what we just had, Jim Caldwell declined the penalty. The Packers kept their offense out there, and then Jim Caldwell changed his decision and accepted the penalty for a hold. I, what did you see from back in Los Angeles? Is that something that's allowable? Well, I'll tell you, it used to be that the captain made the decision on the field and then they went to the coach and you always, you always tend to allow him to change his mind. You know, his first choice is supposed to be the final choice, but that's really not the way it is in football nowadays. You let them process it and if they want to change, they can change. Well, here is the call on Balaga. Sounds like all heck is breaking loose back there in Los Angeles, Mike. Meanwhile, thanks for checking in. And so, maybe not rule book, but it's an accepted practice according to Mike Pereira. And now a big third down and 12. Just three men on the rush. Rodgers throws, pass, caught, first down, Randall Cobb. And that was all Aaron Rodgers moving to his left and throwing across his body. Well, it was because they had a three-man rush, but then they bring Ziggy Onsa at they rush him late, so Rodgers is under pressure. Now a quick snap and Everett Harris on the catch on first down. He's off balance and under pressure, is able to deliver the ball, and Randall Cobb to bring it in for the first down. Now second and four after the catch by Aberderis. Is there life with the Packers? Here's Aberderis again. Let's go back to the catch by Cobb on third and 12. Yeah, and whether or not he caught it, you're going to see the route by Randall Cobb does an excellent job. He does catch it. You know, they were quick to get up there and snap the ball, but you see the throw there by Aaron Rodgers under pressure. It's a big time completion. Here's one down the sideline. Adams can't hang on. And that's one of the better throws of the day by Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, that looked like money right there to Devontae Adams. He has a step. As you're going to see, he just takes off down the field. He leaves Rodgers plenty of room to work with, and he puts it in there beautifully, just unable to make the play. That would have been one of those big chunks that they just have not been able to get. Second and ten. Rodgers. Abrogaris lost the ball. But they're going to say it's a catch. And he lost it on the hit by Quinn. Well, that's going to be worth taking a look at and see. He's got two feet down, and now he's got to still maintain it as he turns to become a runner. That's pretty close. It looks to me like he has it. He's turned. He's up the field, and then the ball comes out. I think it was a good call. I agree. And Abraderis gets looked at on the sideline after getting that hit by Glover Quinn. Well, there's a little life here for the Green Bay Packers as Abraderis has made a few catches on this drive. That's an excellent job by him. He's getting his opportunity, and as we spoke of earlier, Aaron Rodgers was looking forward to him getting out on the field and getting his opportunities. He likes him in the slot, some of the matchups that they can create. And that's, uh, that's a big chunk. Those things sets up points. They're in a great position right now. 
with still plenty of time left in this football game. It's different than securing a catch going to the ground, which we've seen many times, and certainly Calvin Johnson and the Lions are aware of it. But that opening day at Soldier Field years ago. Made the catch, turned, was a runner, got hit, ball out of bounds, first and goal at the four. Pass is incomplete for Jones. A lot of traffic, good coverage, and Jones just can't hang on. Yeah, and Rodgers, you got to stick it on him, tight coverage down here, and just unable to haul that one in. And, and Nevin Lawson, this guy has gotten a lot of activity throughout this game. No catches for Jones. Second and goal. They fake it to start. Pass caught. Richard Rodgers touchdown. Comes right here, and you see the throw. Rodgers throws a perfect pass. He can't lead him to make it an easy catch for Rodgers because of the defense. He has to put it on his back shoulder. I think he's hoping Rodgers maybe throttles that, that route down a little bit. But an excellent job finishing off that drive. Getting Green Bay right back in the middle of this game. That was Glover Quinn who was in position had Rodgers led him. Good throw by Aaron Rodgers and Richard Rodgers with a touchdown, the extra point. It's a two-point game. There is life at Lambeau for the Packers in the offense in number 12. Two-point Lions lead, 5-5-5 five, five, five to go. We have a new audience if you're just joining us. Look at the score, 12-10 Detroit. Matthew Stafford has been heating up as the game has gone on. Aaron Rodgers just heated up on the last possession. Finally gets the first touchdown of the day for Green Bay. A missed extra point by Matt Prater. As this a two-point game. And the drive for the Lions up by two, who have not won in the state of Wisconsin since 1991. We'll start at the 20. The 104-yard kickoff return by Abdullah that set him up at the one. Eventually the touchdown to Brandon Pettigrew. A lot of that from Aaron Rodgers, head shaking. But not here. A celebration, mild one, by Aaron Rodgers as he found Richard Rodgers to make it a two-point game. And now the defense for Green Bay that's played so well all day. Trying to come up with a stop. The Lions trying to eat some of the clock. Here's Bell. A yard maybe. Mike Daniels on the stop. Well, Jim Bob Cooter, the offensive coordinator for the Lions, I mean, he knows what they have to do. They can't get conservative. They've got to throw the ball, and if they're going to be able to maintain possession, they've had a hard time running the football. They've got to move the ball through the air. And with doing that, you know, clearly you're not milking the clock on incompletions, but first downs and going down and trying to score is what they have to do at this point in the game. Second down and nine, Stafford throws, pass is almost picked off by Randall. Incomplete. Good coverage by the rookie on Calvin Johnson. It was outstanding coverage, Joe. He's in a great position on that route, just nowhere to throw this football. He reads the slant. Heck, he's almost running the route for Calvin Johnson. Stafford fortunate that that ball wasn't intercepted. That's a great play by the young player. They love him, and you can see why week after week. He's just getting better and better. Demarius Randall, the rookie from Arizona State. You grow up a lot when you're playing in these types of ball games with the game on the line and having to cover a guy like Calvin Johnson. Third down and nine, Stafford. And 
Still on his feet, throws, pass, caught. And a first down catch by Calvin Johnson and Matthew Stafford just kept it alive. Big pressure by Mike Daniels. You know, Stafford's more athletic than he probably gets credited for, but I don't know how he avoided going to the ground. A couple of times it looked like he was going to be caught in the pocket. He has to come out and put his baseball throw on that one. That's a big completion between he and Calvin Johnson. Packers have not had a sack in their last two games. They don't have one today. On first down, here's Golden Tate on an end around. Gets a block on the edge. Clinton Dix forces him out of bounds. Another new audience joins us. And this game, it's been frustrating for each offense. For Detroit, they had a 104-yard kick return by Amir Abdullah, the rookie, that set up their only touchdown. And the Packers offensively, it's been frustrating for three straight weeks now. They just scored the last time they had it on a touchdown to Richard Rodgers to make it a two-point game. First down, Lions at their own 45. Here's Bell. Here's Randall. He can cover, and the former safety in college likes to tackle. He's playing great. Loss of one. He really is. I mean, he's really growing up right in front of us as we watch him over the last several weeks and the plays that he's been able to make. And like you said, Joe, I mean, for him to be able to come up, make the plays that he's made against Calvin Johnson, a perennial all-pro player, and then still be willing to throw his body in there and make a tackle. Got a nice find in him. Second and 11 for the Lions, who have not won in Wisconsin over their last 24 games. On second and 11, it's Riddick. Good hit by Clinton Dix. It'll be a big third down and three. And a player is down, Clinton Dix, for Green Bay. And he took a shot to the head on that tackle. So the officials blow it dead, stop the clock, and they will get a member of the athletic training staff out there to check. And that was helmet to helmet. Yeah, that was a big time blow for both of those guys. You know, Clinton Dix, he was shaking up the worst, but Theo Riddick, he was a little slow getting up as well. It's a big-time collision. For Clinton Dix, 11 tackles, game high. An interception that was huge. Well, huge third down right here. Green Bay still with two timeouts left. A lot of time left for them. They're going to make a stop here on third down. Third down and three. Taking bows after that one from Matthew Stafford. Well, Dom Capers, he, he dials up the blitz, and with that, then you're going to get man coverage. And Jim Bob Cooter makes a nice call. They go bunch formation. They run Golden Tate underneath. Coverage gets lost in the wash. It gives Stafford an open receiver to get the ball to, and then he makes some people miss with some poor tackling. And now they got the ball first and goal from the five. They needed three. They got 43. It was Sam Shields who made that hit. No tackle. And a big one for the Lions who lead by two. Just got it away. Bell to the four. And we'll see what happens inside the red zone where the Packers started the day. The 11th best team defense inside 
the red zone and no timeout taken yeah, here I'm, by Mike I'm surprised. McCarthy. You know, they got the two-minute warning, but I'm surprised he didn't start burning some timeouts well before this two-minute warning. They have two left. We're at the two-minute warning. Detroit knocking on the door as they lead by two at Lambeau. Aerial coverage provided by Nationwide. On that previous play on first and goal, the ball was just snapped as one turned to zero on the play clock and then with 225 left no timeout taken that's a lot of clock to burn and Rodgers thought they should call well, it I did, I did too if they score a touchdown here it's pretty much game over I mean you're playing to stop them and hold them to a field goal I think you burn the timeout immediately and they don't score on second down you burn it immediately and you got the two minute warning to play with second down and goal Stafford end zone touchdown Lance Moore and Lance Moore, the longtime New Orleans Saint, is into the end zone. That makes it an eight point game, and with a successful extra point, it's a two score game. That's an excellent job against Casey Hayward. Lance Moore runs the slam route, slow plays him off the line of scrimmage. That's a good call by offensive coordinator Jim Bob Cooter. I mean, right there at second down, you're anticipating the Lions running the football, using the clock, and they come out and throw it with an open middle of the field. That's an outstanding job. This is a big extra point by Prater. Makes it a two-score game, and he did not. He's missed two in this game and three on the year. He's hit field goals from 51 and 49. He's missed two extra points. And this means that Green Bay, now with their two timeouts left, have a chance with a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie it. And that took an immediate left turn. It looked good right off his foot. That's amazing that lost out on two points they'd have a 10 point lead if they're able to make those extra points now they give Green Bay life and the issues that these kickers have had for the Detroit Lions going back to last year amazes me that's the earlier one off the foot of Prater we talked about moving the extra point back there had been 31 extra points missed coming into today there were eight missed all of last year Kickers were converting at 95% this year after 99.3% last year. But by moving it back, it's taken the automatic element out of it. And Matt Prater's missed two, and this is a one-score game. And now Green Bay, they have a minute 57 and two timeouts to try to get it down the field. That is a major miss for the Lions, and it gives Aaron Rodgers some hope. Raider will kick it. On one hop, it's Hyde. Out of bounds across the 25. We'll mark him at the 27. Nevin Lawson, who's been tested all day by Aaron Rodgers, there to force him out. That was a heck of a catch there by Micah Hyde, taking it on the short hop. There's a day for Aaron Rodgers. They didn't kick it in until the second half last week at Carolina. They had the frustrating day at Denver two weeks ago and here today against Detroit, a division rival they have owned. Here they are trailing by eight. Yeah, but how many times have we seen Aaron Rodgers over the years in this situation? Down eight points, a minute and 49 to play, and two timeouts, and more times than not, number 12, we've seen him deliver. Four-man rush underneath it starts. Ball is out. Detroit has it. Abdul Kadus on the return, and the Lions take over. Josh Bynes forced it out. And now each side has a turnover. And we'll take another look at it see if his arm was down he's been contacted there by Bynes and the ground well his knee caused it 
but he was already down by contact. He's in the process there of getting back up, but he was down by contact. The previous play is under review. Right now, it's a turnover. That's what they ruled it on the field. It's a booth review inside of two minutes. And the Packers' hopes rest with a call. Here comes a call from John Hussey. After review, the ruling on the field has been changed. The runner was down by contact. The ball replaced at the 31-yard line. It will be Green Bay's ball, second down. Clock operator, the clock should be at 145. Please set the clock at 145. Even though the knees don't go down, the forearm went down after he was touched by Bynes, and then T.J. Lang, forcing Abdul Kadus out of bounds, got hurt. He's on the sideline. And now we've seen Bakhtiari have to leave. And Josh Walker, a rookie, out of Middle Tennessee State, takes over at right guard, second down and six. They have to reset the clock now. And the game clock will start. Thank you. They're actually going to take time off the clock and then wind it. And they put it back in play. Sounded like John Hussey said. One three eight. Right now it's showing one thirty five. The two timeouts left for Green Bay now one thirty eight. With the ball at the thirty one. So they reverse the call of the fumble. A clear down by contact. And they'll start the game clock right now. Second and six. A screen for Starks. Gets a block from Adams. James Starks is out of bounds in midfield. That's an excellent job. As you're going to see the screen to Starks. He's so good at it. The key block, as you said, Joe, Devontae Adams has to be able to make the block on the outside corner Lawson and he does in an excellent play. T.J. Lang, the outstanding guard, comes right back in for the Packers. Quick throw, Carrillo, another catch for number 80. His second of the day. He has more catches today than he had coming in. Good for 12. 200. Oh, oh, oh. Run. Run, run. Run. 319. 319. From the 38, a minute left. Not on the same page with Cobb. Second and 10. And they went to that wheel route once again, or at least that's what Cobb thought that was. That was called a miscommunication between those two, but still plenty of time with two timeouts, and they force the Lions defensively. They've got to cover the whole field. Hey, five, seven. Full yeah. time, Rich, full time. 319. 319. On second and ten, another screen for Starks. Good play by Whitehead to come off the block and make the tackle. And a timeout taken by Green Bay. Right now they're saying third down. Third down and a yard, maybe less than a yard. And I think that's the look from Mike McCarthy thinking that Starks might have picked up the first down. Welcome inside the booth. I'm Joe. That's Troy. And life for the Green Bay Packers. If you're on the other side and you're the Lions, you haven't beaten Green Bay on the road since 91. And right now, two missed extra points has life for Green Bay. Yeah, no doubt. And Matt Prater, he's become the biggest cheerleader there is in this stadium if you're a Lions fan for that defense of the Lions to be able to make a key stop. But right now, you know, the Packers are rolling. You like the ball in Aaron Rodgers' hands in this situation. And you know, they've been able to get some key plays now to James Starks on the screen play. And still plenty of time in this football game for Aaron Rodgers to use the field to his advantage. That was a good call by the official. 
It's third down and inches, less than a yard. And for Aaron Rodgers, a career high with his 53 pass attempts. Right now, it's not enough. Third and inches, one time out left. is caught for the first down. Rodgers able to dive out of bounds and save the timeout. Yeah, it's a big time job by Richard Rodgers just recognizing and knowing the situation in the game and getting to the boundaries to preserve a timeout. Lawson doing everything he can to get him to the ground. He's a big man, but he knew he had to get to the sidelines. He does. That's a great job by Richard Rodgers. A lot of young guys like that to just aren't that aware of situations in games. He clearly was. Kudos to him. Packers have been looking for more out of Richard Rodgers. Andrew Corliss will miss one more game. He is the more dynamic tight end. He's on IR designated to return. He came back to practice this week and he will be eligible to come back to the active roster against Chicago on Thanksgiving. As we have a timeout here, Mike Hill stands by with a game break. All right, guys, Vikings trying to take the outright lead in the NFC North, taking the lead against the Oakland Raiders. They're opening possession. Rhett Ellison, 11-yard catch from Teddy Bridgewater. His first TD of the season. Vikings on top, 7-0. Joe, Troy, back to you. Yeah, there'll be eyes on that game, Mike, because at the start of the day, 6-2, and two, the record for the Vikings and the record for Green Bay. And we've talked about how the secondary is thinned out with the loss of Rasheen Mathis on IR because of concussion issues. Nevin Lawson, they've been going after Nevin Lawson all day. And he's down. And so we have the timeout here and let's take another look. Might have been when he first came in, Joe, and delivered the hit to Rodgers. I don't know what exactly they're checking. He's laying down on the ground flat. If it was his neck when he came in, and that's what might have gotten injured, hard to tell. Well, what has to happen here while they look at Lawson? Green Bay needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie the game. Mike Hill's got another game break. All right, guys, some of you may have seen this. Uh, Cowboys continue with their trouble. Uh, Jameis Winston, the bootleg for one yard out, giving the Bucks the 10-6 lead. Matt Castle picked off in the end zone. Boys now lose their seven straight. 10-6, the final there. Joe, Troy, back to you. Yes, yeah, seven in a row, so they will get Tony Romo back next week. At least that's the plan when he's eligible to come back. But it's becoming a lost season for the Dallas Cowboys. We'll take a break here in Green Bay. Great to see Nevin Lawson able to get up and walk off the field under his own power after coming in on that hit on Richard Rodgers. Meanwhile, we talk about Aaron Rodgers. This drive, he's gone 5 for 6 for 50 yards. Last drive went 7 for 10 for 80 and a touchdown. One timeout left, 45 seconds on the clock, down by 8. First down at the 23. 319! 319! Blitz. Adams, incomplete. And good coverage downfield by Quandre Diggs. Yeah, immediately you expected that. If they're going to play one-on-one, -on -one, they're going to go after the rookie, Quandre Diggs, who just came in to replace Lawson on Devontae Adams. And he's in position. He's not turning and making a play on the ball. I think it was a good non-call. But if Rodgers had been able to get that ball up a little bit higher, Adams was able to levitate and be able to make a play. Crowd wanted a flag, they don't get it. Aaron Rodgers is thrown toward Devontae Adams 18 times today. Probably won't be the last. On second down. Here's Rodgers that is interfered with by Whitehead. And Aaron Rodgers took a hit. There's actually two flags now down on the field. Here's the hit by Ansa down low. And there's a flag down in that area. 
Yeah, I think they're going to get the call on that. It's the right call. You know, even though Ansu was on the ground, he's just trying to make a play. And this was a good call against Tahir Whitehead as well up the sideline against Richard Rodgers. We just hope that Aaron Rodgers is okay. After getting that hit low, there's Josh Wilson. See how he got hurt. Well, Josh Wilson, he's the slot nickel defender, and you know, he goes down clutching his knee without contact. You always worry about those. There are two fouls. The first one we are going to pick up. There is not any defensive pass interference. The second foul is pass roughing the passer. Defense number 91. That is half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. They say 91. They mean 94. Ansa. And just a dangerous hit. As Rodgers is still limping around after that from Ziggy Ansa. Well, clearly, I mean, no malicious intent there by Ziggy Ansa. He's on the ground. He's trying to just make a play, and that's the only place he could hit him. But it is a dangerous hit when you're taking on quarterbacks in the pocket down low. A costly penalty, but one that, that clearly should be called. That's what they're looking for. Rodgers has been hit ten times, sacked three times. Aaron Rodgers was sacked eight times the last two games. But he has dropped back 59 times. Yeah, pretty incredible that they, they just have not, once again, been able to get anything going on the ground and has not helped out Aaron Rodgers at all. Is Josh Wilson now coming off. And like I said, you know, he, there was no real contact on the play, but immediately he goes to the ground and clutching his leg. And you know, those typically are the ones that don't turn out too well. So. Rasheen Mathis put on IR yesterday. Nevin Lawson's been lost here on this drive. Now Josh Wilson. They're down to Slay and Quandre Diggs as corners. They added Cresden Butler this week and Isaiah Johnson off the practice squad. But that is a dangerous proposition for this secondary of Detroit. There's Cresden Butler against Aaron Rodgers. We move slowly back to the huddle. And with a penalty, it'll be a first down just outside the 11. Two missed extra points. Giving the Green Bay Packers hope to make it 25 straight, but they need a touchdown and a two point conversion. 40 seconds. Please set the play clock to 40 seconds. They reset the play clock. Randall Cobb will start this play at least in the backfield. They moved him all over. We've seen a lot of this today. Now ready for play on first down for Green Bay, down by eight. Well, it looks like they're going to try to match up Quandre Diggs. There's Quandre Diggs here. They got to hear Whitehead at linebacker. They're trying to talk out how they're going to handle Cobb in the backfield. Rodgers, end zone, Carrillo for the touchdown. Justin Perillo with his biggest day in the NFL. But now the two-point conversion drive. And the Packers had one last week. They're two for two on the year. Well, watch Perillo here in the coverage by the Lions. And Aaron Rodgers throws an absolute beauty right there between two defenders and threads the needle to Perillo to give him the touchdown. But this all comes down to a two-point conversion. Perillo came in with two catches on the year. He's got five now and a touchdown. Well, we know what they did last week with Cobb, expecting man coverage and motioning him against. Whatever play they're going to go with, I guarantee you they had this worked on. They thought about it coming into this game. Heavy right, squeeze left, 319! And the Green Bay sideline took a timeout. 
The only reason it's coming down to this try is because of the two missed extra points by Matt Prater, who has hit from 49 and 51. But he missed early in this second half, and then on their last touchdown, as this thing just took a straight left turn about halfway to the upright. Aaron Rodgers, meanwhile, over the last two drives, has gone 13 for 18, 141 yards and two touchdowns. But if the Packers are going to tie this game, he and the offense are going to have to find their way back into the end zone here for two. Two for two on the year. They've gone to Adams and Richard Rodgers on two-point tries previously, including one last week at Carolina. Well, if you're Detroit, you've got to be figuring that he's thinking Randall Cobb on this play, but because there's so many young guys right now in the secondary defensively, he's going to pick his matchup that he likes best. Quick jelly, 5'9", quick jelly, 5'9". You got here. Run, run, run. 319! 319! Rodgers. It's incomplete for Adams. Broken up. By Creston Butler. And the Lions are 32 seconds away from their first win against the Packers on the road since 1991. And the man just added to the active roster, Creston Butler broke it up. They get pressure right up the gut. They turn another man loose, which forces Aaron Rodgers to throw the ball much sooner than he really wanted or not get enough on this because he had Devontae Adams with plenty of grass if he just leads him. He's got plenty of room. He gets the matchup, the new kid Butler on Devontae Adams, pressure in the middle, unable to lay it out. And another missed opportunity to send the game into overtime for the second week in a row. And for the second week in a row, it took until the second half for the offense to get any traction for Green Bay. And they're gonna come up two points short. At least at the moment right now, the hope for the Green Bay Packers is an onside kick. It's a two-point game, 32 seconds still remain. But it's Butler, and we had that shot of Matt Prater, who's missed two extra points. Now he's rooting for the hands team for Detroit to make a play. And into the arms of the rookie, Demarius Randall. Life in Green Bay again. Well, who would you rather have out there than Calvin Johnson? They get the good hop to be able to go up and make a play on the ball. He just is unable to make it in these situations with the game on the line. You just don't know what's going to happen. And they have given the ball back to the Packers with still plenty of time. These Packer fans, they witnessed this on the other end last year in the NFC Championship game. This time they're on the receiving end and then life. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's shades of Brandon Bostic as you talked about last year in Seattle in the champ game. And this time, it's the great Calvin Johnson literally right through his hands to Demarius Randall. But still work to be done. No timeouts. 19! Awesome. up! Pass is incomplete for Adams. 27 seconds remain. The career long for Mason Crosby is 58 yards. His long this year came at Denver, 56 yards. But if you go with a 58, that means getting it to the 40-yard line. That's only nine yards away. But they want more than that. Well, Terrell Austin, the defensive coordinator for the Lions, the Packers have struggled picking up the pressure packages. They're on first down. He brought it. Let's see if he continues to do so. 319! Same page 
with Cobb, who's looking for a flag, doesn't get it. Now it's third down and ten. And once again, they bring extra rushers, so it's man-to-man -man across the board. And like I said, these officials have really let these guys get their hands on the receivers. And Terrell Austin is dialing it up, and now you've got third down. And like you said, Joe, really just ten yards to get within range. There will be no overtime in this game. 23 seconds left. Third right. down and 10. Pass is caught by Adams. But they have to get up and stop the clock. They're inside Crosby's range, albeit at the edge of it. Now eight seconds left. Do you want to bite off any more or kick it here? Yeah, I don't think you take any chances. The only thing you could think about doing is maybe trying to run some quick outs, pick up three or four more yards to make this a little bit easier, and maybe that's what they're going to do. You know, you trust your quarterback in this situation, and if it's not there, throw it into the stands. If it is, you complete the pass. See if you can get a little more yardage to help out Crosby on the kick. Mason Crosby, his long here at Lambeau is 55. It'll be a 55-yarder right from here. this spot. Gotta come out quick. Wentz passes caught by Adams. And now the field goal try by Crosby. Who's one for one today? And that's an excellent job. Just Knowing the situation, getting a few more yards, help out Crosby here on the kick. No timeouts for either side. Does the streak end here? Or does it continue? It's up to this group. Good, Maste, and Crosby from 52. For the win. No good. Blocked. And the Lions have won it. And Jim Caldwell has brought his Lions to Lambeau Field. And they're going to come out of here with an 18 to 16 win. Let's take another look. Good snap. Good hold. And I don't know if anybody touched it. It just came off his foot sideways. We'll get another look at it before we go off the air. Either way, it's a miss. And the Lions win as the Packers slip to 6-3 back after this.